Okay, welcome to part two. This is where we're going to sort the amplifier up on this Ultra 6042 record player. Now, Mr. Chippy has already taken the there's some screws which hold the front panel in, and we understand that that's how it comes out. I've never seen one of these before, so that's what we think happens. Better take that P clip out as well. So we'll just do that, and hopefully the panel will push forwards. Okay, so that's just the amplifier now propped up on the... We've pulled it up through the front, having taken the four, I think the four BA nuts off. And as you can see, that's the amplifier module. Now, these black capacitors are always suspect. They weren't that brilliant at the time, and they're certainly not brilliant 40-odd uh, years later. We're, we're going to change everything in there uh, on those electrolytics. So we'll get Mr C to do that, and then we'll put the recorder back on. Okay, so Mr. C has now done the capacitors on this. We've taken out a wonderful selection of horrors there. I haven't put them on the capacitor tester or the ESR meter yet, but uh, I think the vendor said it uh, made loud, loud banging sounds when you switched it on, so we don't risk it. Because as you're aware, if you start switching things on with capacitors as if I think the good word is knackered, then uh, you can end up blowing the transistors, which is... A silly thing to do. We've also cleaned the controls. We've used service on on those. As you can see, the nice big controls. So what we're going to do now is power it up. Okay, we've powered it up, and you can probably see the neon uh, is lit. So what we have discovered, if I can just reach over, is it seems to work all right. And if I just tickle the stylus, you can hear that coming through the speaker. So without further ado, we'll put it back together. Right then, folks. Well, two hours later, we tested this um, with a record for two and a half minutes, and then it went all distorted. And to cut a long story short, um, one of the complementary output transistors had failed, and it was the AD161. So we swapped the pair, and they are a matched pair. So it's now back living again. So it just goes to show that you do all the right things, and things can still fail. But because we don't know what strain it was last under with the capacitors as fitted. As part of our diagnosis, we chose to change the bridge rectifier. We put a bit more Tonka one in than was originally fitted. Now all we need to do really is to set the tracking pressure. And if I can just move this camera down a fraction, like there, and get the little meter out, I'd like it to be somewhere around four grams. Let's see what it is. Ah, more than 20. Right, so we need to adjust that. Right, so as you can see, we've got that at four and a half. So in the case of this, the adjustment, if you can just see the back there, there is a grub screw just there. And it was a matter of reducing the pressure by screwing the grub screw anti-clockwise. And that's about as low as it will go. So we go four and a half, that'll do fine as long as it tracks the record okay. So that concludes the video on this product and we'll see you with a demonstration of it working with one of our famous B-sides of some random record. Thanks for watching.